review as well as an oil change on the Suzuki Quad Runner 250. This is the LT4WD model. It's a four wheel drive. It's got several different gear positions, high, low, and super low. I'm gonna show you those things as well as change your oil, show you how to service this four wheeler. I'm gonna show you a couple things we like on this four wheeler as well as a couple things we don't like, a couple of the problems that you run into when you own a four wheeler like this. I'm gonna show you how to adjust the valves, clean the carburetors, uh, remove carburetors, uh, replace CV shafts. Check my channel for these other videos. I will make sure and put links below. Thank you for watching. If you guys have questions, make sure you leave those in the comments below. Please like and subscribe. We're gonna continue making videos like this. Any thumbs up and notification bells that you can hit is helpful to us. Thanks a lot. We're gonna start off on the right hand side here, this four wheeler. We've got uh, the seat off at this time. We've already started a service on this machine. Uh, on the right hand side here, we've actually got foot pegs that go all the way across this four wheeler. So if you uh, bend or break one of these foot pegs, you're gonna end up having to replace the entire assembly there, which is kind of a hassle. Uh, also on the right hand side, down by the foot here is your foot brake and your handlebar, your left hand handlebar, uh, there's a cable that comes down. It's going to attach to the rear foot pedal of this, uh, for this brake assembly here. This cable comes from the handlebar, goes down. What you're doing when you're pulling that left hand lever in, you're actually pulling this lever down, you're actually pulling this lever forward, and that's engaging the rear brakes. And I'll show you that a little bit more when we get to the back end there. On your motor here, I've several times had people ask me about uh, what this lever is for. It's a decompression lever. Uh, some of the newer four-wheelers have automatic decompression. This one's got a lever here. You can push down, go ahead and pull start your four-wheeler. Now, lever should automatically kick up when that four-wheeler starts, um, but that helps. It put, actually, what it does is push the valve down, opens those uh, opens up that compression a little bit so you're able to pull start that four wheeler a little bit easier just to make your life a little bit easier. We've got your ignition coil here. Uh, this is your cap running up to your ignition coil that actually sits up here. This cap uh, just pulls off of there. You've got a spark plug underneath of there. I'm going to give you the specs at the end of this video, um, but you want to make sure you change that spark plug every time you service your four wheeler. Pull that spark plug, change it. Uh, put it back in, then take and slide that cap back on there. You should hear a clicking noise or a snapping noise when you do that. We've got a front drive shaft, and it's unusually long on this four-wheeler because your motor sits so far back on this. Uh, you've got a drive shaft that runs that full distance there and then is connected in the back by a U-joint. And that's a common problem on these four-wheelers, that U-joint there needs replaced. Check our channel out for a video to replace these U-joints on this quad runner. And that, again, goes all the way to the front here, and that's going to take us up to the front differential there. Behind uh, these front tires here, you've got a differential. So I guess in between your front tires here, we have a differential. That coupling there, uh, that's a common problem for these to wear out. If you're running a four-wheel drive quite a bit, that uh, puts quite a bit of pressure on that rubber uh, joint there, and um, that needs replaced periodically. And as last time I checked, you could no longer get these from Suzuki. So these used are a hot commodity. Uh, there are several knockoff aftermarket brands that started making something like this. Again, you get what, get what you pay for there. Uh, just be careful when you go and buy something like that from a, a knockoff unbranded uh, manufacturer. So you've got caps on all four wheels here. That just protects that nut. That's the axle that runs through there. And then there's a nut in behind this cap here. You got Front independent suspension on here, two shocks on the front end. Uh, you've got adjustable shocks. They've got uh, about five different settings on these shocks. You take a spanner wrench, and I've showed you on several other videos how to adjust this shock, uh, but you can do that. On either side, you do wanna make sure they are the same. Uh, that's if you're putting quite a bit of weight on the front rack of this four-wheeler. Uh, if you need to stiffen that up or you need a smoother ride, go ahead and adjust those shocks, but adjust those the same amount on either side. On your front differential here, that's something you wanna service. And I like to do that every time I change the oil on the four-wheeler. You wouldn't have to if you're not using that four-wheel drive uh, very often. It's not something you've gotta do every time. Uh, I'll give you those uh, that maintenance schedule below, um, but it is something you wanna check and change periodically. You've got your fill plug here. That's also your check plug. So it looks to be about a 17 millimeter uh, socket to remove your fill plug there. 
And then down below, I believe it's a 21 millimeter drain bolt. You don't have to remove this skid plate. There's a hole in that skid plate and you can drain that oil there. When that's finished draining, put that uh, bottom plug back in, take and fill it up with an 80 weight, 90 high point gear oil until it starts coming out of that fill plug cap there. And then you wanna stick that fill plug cap back in and that's when you know it's full. Checking that oil then, you put on a, get your four wheeler on flat ground, pull that plug right there, make sure that you can see oil in that front differential, then you know that it's full. You've got two CV shafts on this four wheeler up front here. Uh, some people call them an axle shaft. You've got CV boots on either side. Two on each axle there. You want to inspect those. Make sure those are in good condition before you go out riding. If you have any rips or tears, you want to go ahead and fix those immediately. Otherwise, you're going to be replacing a CV joint or uh, a CV axle. And I've done tons of other videos on replacing the CV axles and replacing the CV boots on these uh, quad runners. So make sure you check those videos out. Check those often. You've got front hydraulic brakes on this four-wheeler uh, for a 1988 model. That's pretty sophisticated uh, for a four-wheeler. You do want to make sure you've got good fluid up at the handlebar up there, and you do want to make sure that your brakes are bled properly. I'll show you a vi separate video on that. Uh, that could get fairly lengthy if I were to shoot that now. Um, but you do want to make sure that your brakes are working properly before you go out. You can see we've got some severe fender damage on this four-wheeler. This thing's has been through quite a bit and uh, we're in need of quite a few repairs, uh, but you can see what happens there when a four wheeler gets abused. We've got all kinds of plastic issues. We've got square headlights in here. You'll notice on some of my other videos on the quad runners and the king quads and the quad masters, some of them have the round headlights. Underneath of this black cover here is a lot of your electrical components. And I'll show you that here in a little bit. Left hand side, almost identical to the right hand side on this front end here you've got your axle cap here you've got your lug nuts there those are 14 millimeter lug nuts there go ahead and remove those lug nuts your rim will pop off of there you've got a hub drum brake assembly up front there they're drum brakes um, you have to pull this entire assembly off to replace those brake shoes again got another video on that go ahead and check that out um, that'll be uh, on my channel on the left hand side here you've got your gear shifter it's a five speed uh five gears up and then to shift down you push down and your cable that sits here just goes all the way back to your transmission there just kind of a loop kind of a rainbow uh shape there and goes back to the back end of your four-wheeler there to shift that transmission. You do wanna make sure that that cable's in good condition. Make sure this boot isn't ripped or torn. Make sure there's no kinks in that steel rod cable there. This is your exhaust header for their four-wheeler, so you will notice that your left-hand foot gets unusually hot. You can see here, this is a plastic cover, so you're obviously not uh, gonna have issues with burning holes in your, in your shoes there. This isn't gonna get that hot, but you are gonna feel a little bit of warmth there on your left foot. You've got 10 inch rims on the front and the rear of these four wheelers. You can see the rear tires are substantially larger than the front. This is a 25, 12, 10. The front, you're gonna have a 22, 8, 10. So substantially smaller in height as well as width, but the rim size is gonna be the same. So you're not going to interchange the front and rear tires on these. It just won't work. You don't have enough clearance there. You've got your muffler that comes out the center of the back end there, uh, right below your muffler is your fill cap for your engine oil. And then down below, uh, more on the right hand side of that crankcase there, you've got your drain plug there. You can see it's a larger opening in that skid plate. That is where you drain your oil. So I suggest starting and running that four-wheeler for a little bit, uh, a couple minutes, don't get it too terribly hot so you can still go in and uh, remove that drain plug and not burn yourself. Drain all that oil. On the right hand side clutch cover, I'll go over there in a little bit, is your oil filter. Uh, well, as soon as that oil filter has been replaced and you put in your drain bolt, you can um, get ready to fill that uh, crankcase full of oil. Your transmission and your engine oil are both in the same housing on here. It's a little bit of an unusual style. All the quad runners and the king quads, this older model, is the exact same. You don't have a separate differential and crankcase and transmission oil. This is all in one housing. You use a 1040 oil, it says that on the cap there, and I'll get you a capacity here. 
in a minute, but you want to fill it up. And then on the right hand side over on your clutch cover is your sight glass. I'm going to show you where to fill that up and then we'll move over to the right hand side there. Your rear shocks on here. So this is a fully independent suspension. Uh, you've got four shocks on this and they are all fully adjustable. So you've got uh, five or six different settings there on the rear. Again, depending on how much weight you want to put on the back end of this four-wheeler or what you want your ride to be, uh, you can adjust those shocks. A little bit different style of drive shaft in the rear. You've got a U-joint assembly here with their yokes and same way with on the outside. So this is a different style. It's not a CV shaft like you'd have up front. You've got two U-joints. Some people would argue that this is a better system. I don't know, I go back and forth on it. They've got issues with both of them. Neither one are uh, too terrible hard to replace, but it's something you wanna keep an eye on. Some of the quad runners and the quad masters and the king quads will actually have a large boot that covers up this U-joint. Now, this one doesn't, and you wouldn't necessarily have to have that on there. It is gonna dry out, wear out a little bit quicker just because you're open to the elements there. But the fact is these caps on this U-joint here are uh, supposed to be sealed up. They're supposed to be protected. Uh, but that, that boot that sits over this entire assembly here, I could see would add a little bit of extra protection there um, to keep that U-joint from wearing out as quick. The thing is, the outside U-joint doesn't have that. So um, I'm not totally sure why you'd have that on the inside. So inspect that periodically, just make sure those U-joints are tight, make sure it's in good condition. You've got a tail light here, and on this style, you've actually got a brake light. So when you pull your, when you push your pedal down on the right-hand side, your brake pedal, your brake light will actually come on on the back of that four-wheeler. It is a running light as well. When you flip the switch up at the handlebars, uh, that light will come on so you can see that light from the rear. Behind that shock there, you can see you've got a speedo cable that runs directly up to your handlebars there. Your gauge assembly is, um, that's the speedo cable. There's a little gearbox in underneath of that cable there. Those have a tendency of going bad. If your speedometer doesn't seem to be working right, I would suggest tearing into that uh, speedometer gearbox down there. You can see we've got a broken axle here in the rear. You've got a U-joint that failed there and they've just pulled that drive shaft completely out of there just to allow this four wheeler to continue to run until they can come bring it in and get it fixed. Also on the rear here, you've got a muffler that's uh, pretty destroyed. We wanna make sure that this is in better condition before we send this customer out on the trails. Back around to the right hand side here, I told you I'd show you where that engine oil filter is. Uh, it's a lot easier if you pull this uh, right hand rear tire off to get to. You can see this sight glass a little bit better. Once you put your oil in there, and again, I'll get you those capacities, uh, your oil will probably be a little bit full. You start your four wheeler up, let it run for a little bit. That's going to soak up some of that oil in that oil filter there. That's probably gonna drop your oil level down a little bit. Shut your four wheeler off, let it sit for a minute or two, and then go ahead and check your oil again. You, um, you want it in between the two marks that are actually on this clutch cover that you probably won't see in your video, but you can feel them. They're on the right hand side of this window here, right in front of this window. So that's a high and a low mark there for your engine oil and your transmission oil and your differential oil. Right behind your sight glass is your oil filter. You've got three 10 millimeter nuts there that you need to remove and that cover will pop off of there and you will find your oil filter underneath of there. Go ahead and replace that every time you change your engine oil. Going up to the handlebars here, again, we've got the seat off already. We've got a storage box in the rear held on with a rubber strap so that uh, is supposed to be waterproof. You've got a pretty good waterproof seal here as long as there's no um, no major wear on this seal here. It should be waterproof. And then underneath of your seat is your air filter cover. You've got two Phillips screws that you've got to remove uh, to get to that air filter. So two Phillips screws there, pull this off, inspect your air filter, make sure that's in good condition before you go out riding. I like to service that air filter or replace it every time I change my engine oil. You do wanna check your engine oil and your air filter uh, more often than just when you change those 
uh, just to make sure that those are in good condition. Your recoil pull starter is here, so if your battery's low or just not uh, charged up, uh, you can go ahead and pull start. Your four-wheeler, again, you've got your decompression lever here, then push that lever down or back in this case, and then you can pull start your four-wheeler here. Obviously, the seat needs to remove to get to that. Got your carburetor here. I've done several videos on cleaning and replacing and rebuilding these carburetors. Make sure you check that out, but you've got a spin top on here. That's gonna pull your slide, your throttle cable all out all at once. And I'll do another video on how to uh, clean and rebuild the, the carburetor on this quad runner. It's gonna be slightly different than the last quad runner 250 that I did that was a little bit newer. Up on the handlebars here, we've got your speedometer, obviously. We've got your odometer, and then we've got a trip here. This trip is uh, resettable. You've got a knob that sits over here. This one actually is broke off, so we're not going to be able to reset that trip, but you've got 2,486 miles on this four-wheeler. Again, that goes down to the speedometer. That goes to the gearbox in the back uh, right hand side Two, turn this four-wheeler on flip that switch one time that's going to allow you to hit the start button on the left hand side also make sure that this engine stop button is in the run position and then you can hit your starter button down here here's your choke lever on the left hand side there pull it back towards you which is uh, slightly down that's going to choke your four-wheeler. You want to make sure and shut that choke off once you get your four-wheeler warmed up. If you want to turn your lights on, you can turn this ignition switch one more time. That's going to allow your lights to pop on. And then you can adjust your high and low beam here. Your only lights on this four-wheeler are those two square headlights down below this black panel here. And they do have a high and low option. You've got your parking brake here. We've got the parking brake engaged at th this time. To remove your parking brake, pull this lever in, and this uh, this lever here will pop back. That'll allow your uh, rear parking brake there to disengage. That'll allow you to move that four-wheeler freely. To engage your parking brake, pull this lever in. It's kind of a two-handed job. Then you can take and push this in. It's going to lock in that little slot there, and then your park brake is engaged. On the right-hand side is your thumb throttle and there is a throttle stop that you can uh, screw in if you've got younger kids riding this four-wheeler or just don't trust the person you've got on it. You've got a Phillips screw and a eight millimeter nut there that you can adjust to turn that in. That's going to allow that throttle not to be pushed quite as far and then you won't be able to go as fast. So that is your thumb throttle here. You've got your brake master cylinder and reservoir up here this is for your front brakes so i told you the front brakes have their drum brakes but they are hydraulic and you want to make sure that those are working properly those are typically a good uh powerful brake system there's your shift pattern there i told you you've got a five speed and you shift on the left hand side down there but that's your shift pattern a lot of times the sticker will stay on that dash there five gears up five gears down now, what's cool about this four-wheeler, you've got several different ranges on here. So you're actually going to have five gears in the super low position, five gears in the low position, and then five gears in the high position. And you can see to adjust this on your transmission, you do have to push down on this lever, and then you can push it back and forth depending on where you want to be there. Also, on this one, you've got a quick shift and reverse. It's a quick paddle. And uh, be careful when you're using this because you want to make sure that you're not flying down the road and you end up having a kid or somebody in front of you pulling this lever there, that's going to do some serious damage to your four-wheeler. So keep that in mind. It's almost too easy sometimes just to grab a hold of and pull that, but that's how you get into reverse. Pull it back. That'll put you in reverse. You've got your four-wheel drive and your differential uh, selection here. Again, same thing as the right-hand lever. On the left hand, you've got to push that down to switch those modes. You've got two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, and then differential lock, which is all four wheels locked in and turning when you are giving it throttle. So those are your gear positions and your selections there. One more thing on this four-wheeler here before I let you go. I wanted to show you where your VIN number is. A lot of four-wheelers, they've got the VIN number up front, uh, near the front left-hand A-arm. This one's a little bit unusual. You've got it here on the back frame rail on the uh, up and down the vertical uh, framed there, stamped into that frame, and it looks like a little bit of a tag that's tack welded onto this frame here. 17 digits, 
Uh, 10th digit is the year model. I can explain that in more detail if you've got questions on that. We've also got a tag here up by your shift assembly here right underneath of your seat. And that explains some of the details about the four-wheeler tire size, uh, tire PSI, max capacity for the, uh, the loads there. I'll just give you a minute to read through some of that. But it also has the model on there, LT4WD. And they've got several different quad runner models, quad master models, and king quads. And they're all very similar, but they have some slight differences. And I can point those out for you if you've got questions on that. If you guys have questions or comments, make sure you leave those below. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, please hit the notification bell. Also, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with friends and family. That way they can be helped out as well. Thanks for watching.